Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be checking out JC Pro Macro Pad 2. So let's get started. Now I do wanna thank Jeremy Cook hence the JC, for sending this over to me for review. And he basically did everything I wanted to do on a macro keypad, but didn't, but did it better, if that makes sense. One of the biggest things that I love about this is the media dial. Uh, this is something that I wanted to build when I was building my macro keypad. And if you're familiar with that video, which is the Pico with the media keys, I also try to create a media dial just on its own using the Raspberry Pi Pico, which I'll show you a couple of quirky examples that I try to design, but didn't work out very well. But I am so glad that Jeremy actually pulled through with it and made such an awesome device. He had the same intentions that I did when we first started, which was creating a media dial. If you guys never used a media dial on a keyboard or just a dial itself on a computer, I, I, I urge you to try it. I purposely bought this keyboard, which is the DAS key just for this media dial. And I tell you now, I might break this dial before I even kill my keyboard because I use this dial more than anything I use on the keyboard. So having this device, with the media dial basically takes over what my keyboard is doing, which is great. Now on top of that, he also has eight keys versus his early revision, which is five keys. Now this whole thing is programmable. It is running through Arduino. He does have the source codes available so you could program it to your heart's content. Everything that you wanna do will be require a little bit of programming so it doesn't come as default as the way you want it. You're gonna have to learn how to do it or if you know a little bit of C++ and Arduino, you could get this going right away. He does have a lot of demo modes that you could actually just copy and paste from to figure out how you want to get things going. But ultimately, it's not that hard to customize this entire keypad to the way you want it. One of the biggest features about this, other than the media dial that I keep talking about, is the extra pinouts that this board has. So you could see that this little screen is an optional input, but you can actually attach a screen and see what it's doing, or you could use the other pinouts for other modes. He does have other pins like this that you could attach a fan to, or you could program it to do anything else other than you know running a fan. Now I will leave all the links down in the description below for his Kickstarter. And you gotta check out his Kickstarter because this is not the only way you could get it. So take a look at his packages. You could just purchase the board or you could purchase the entire kit pre-soldered and everything like this. And best of all, it's very, very affordable compared to something like a Stream Deck. This is like a quarter of the price and you could do something very similar to that. Also, if you're not interested in what he includes because he's using, I guess, uh, Cherry MX Blues, um, you could purchase Cherry MX Brown, so for quieter noise. So basically it's everything customizable and programmable. Now, like I said earlier, he includes a lot of modes, which I could just cycle through right now. And you can see this is for the volume mode. I could click through this. This is for jiggling the mouse. A few other modes that he has either for Final Cut Pro or MIDI device. Now I added this little mode back here, which is called the browser mode, which is something I like and I use a lot of, which is browsing. The encoder that you see here or the media dial is automatically a scroll bar instead of a volume dial. Then all these other buttons that I programmed in is to interact with either Firefox or Chrome, like making new tabs, going back and forward in a tab, or even creating new tabs or moving your cursor to the top of the search bar. Those are all little things that I programmed into this device. And I don't know if it's going to make it to the final cut of his build, but the codes are available on my GitHub if you were to just use this for a browsing device. Now, off the bat, I already got tons of ideas for this. Not only is this lightweight and very transportable versus my Stream Deck, I could use this in addition to my laptop to make my laptop a little bit easier to use. But one of my friends, mentioned this to me, which was really cool. And if you use any type of tiling window manager or I3 or DWM, this thing would be great to navigate around the tiling window manager, which is something I really want to do because I've never used a macro keypad for Linux tiling ma window manager. That's one of the features that I would want to program in probably in the near future and check it out. Also, uh, this would also be a great device because it has a media dial or encoder for editing. So I use DaVinci Resolve. I would love to code something in here that I could just adapt to a DaVinci Resolve and edit faster. Like this would move the timeline and, or zoom into the timeline or something like that. But I would love to use these macro keys because in all honesty, when I'm editing these videos, I only use like a handful of keys to cut, snip, delete, or even add transitions just by a handful of keys. And if you're a programmer, you really just need about three keys or maybe four, you know, control C, control V, and maybe a button for stack overflow. So 
eight keys for a programmer, this is already too much. But yeah, you can do this all and program it to whatever you want. So here are other examples that you could see, whether it's being used for a CNC machine, a MIDI controller, you could even add certain things to it, like a ring light to make it do certain things. So there's a bunch of other applications to this other than just being a macro key device. And I'm going to leave a link down in the description below to their YouTube channel so you could see their examples of what they're using it for as well. Now in this kit that I got, which is the Foley Assemble Kit, uh, it includes the board itself, eight Cherry MX Blues, the case, and I do like that he had this little special detail to the case, which is my logo or my name onto the case, which is great. And then you also get the media dial and that's the whole thing. Now this screen is provided. I, I He actually gave me a screen, but it doesn't come with the kit, but I do actually have plenty of these screens. So if I wanted something like much bigger, which is the same exact screen, just a little bit bigger, I could have just replaced it with a bigger screen or you could just change it to whatever you want. You don't even have to use this screen because if it's muscle memory, you'll just remember where the keys are and that's about it. Now I've been using this device for about four days now, um, including programming the keys and everything, which wasn't too hard. It was a little tricky. You'll see what I mean when you start programming it. Um, it's just, he does include a mode button and a reset button and you do have to hit the reset button at the perfect time to allow the code to upload. Otherwise, the coding itself was pretty easy. More of like, again, copy and paste, stack overflow, you'll be able to get yourself something set up. I did find myself um, loving to use this thing just for the browser mode right now. I'm, I haven't tried editing with it yet, but I might have to create a mode for editing. And it's very easy to use. It's the base is heavy enough so it doesn't shift around. One thing that I do want to code in here, which is not available, again, everything you, you make it the way you want to, is that uh, when my computer goes to sleep or I need to time out the LEDs. Right, right now it's like really bright. Like for normal use purposes, like right now, I don't find it to be a problem. But after say, I don't know, 15 minutes of inactivity, I do want the lights or LEDs to go to sleep. This way when I my computer does go to sleep, it's not, this is not the brightest thing in the room or something like that. So those are the little things that I have to program in, has nothing to do with the manufacturer or Jeremy Cook. It's just really about coding. But like I said, from the beginning till now, it's everything you program in the way you want. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you have any questions about this device, let me know down in the comments below. I will be using it for about another month or two. I will be using it for quite some time and I'm going to try to incorporate it into my DaVinci Resolve workflow as well as my Linux tiling window manager idea. I do want to play around with that and see how well it will work. Otherwise, if you have any questions, leave it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.